Welcome to part two of my standard operating procedures video. This was a two-part series. This is a continuation and in this video we are going to talk about a property turnover SOP. So stay tuned. So this is my property turnover tenant leaving standard operating procedure. So the first thing I do when I get a notice that a tenant is leaving, I print one of these out. I, I will write the unit in there. Okay, and then I'll write the date started, which is, we'll say this is 9-4-22. And then I get out my highlighter. So, tenant has given notice. I highlight that that has happened. Then I go to my advertising SOP. I open that up. I'll probably make another video on that in the future. Uh, but I work through all the steps that I, I go through to list that property and get it, uh, get it ready to start showing it to a new tenant. I may put a sign in the yard and I've learned from past experience not to do that if the property is going to be vacant uh, you're, you're asking for trouble there you're asking for squatters to come in uh, any all kinds of stuff bad things that can happen so I only put this sign in there if the tenant is going to be staying through that full period um, if I don't I just cross it off if I'm not going to put that up utilities I have most of my utilities set up to revert back to me once the tenant moves out that does not work as smoothly as I would like it to so I have to call them and confirm that they are going to be switched to me I even have another note sheet that I go to and by the way from the other video I didn't show it but in that Explorer window there's a folder called forms and sheets. I have tables, uh, all kinds of reference uh, Excel sheets that I use as well as these uh, SOPs. So for instance I'd click on that in the Word document and that would open up that note sheet and give me a reminder of some problems that came up um, with the utilities in the past. So I'd, I'd go now to the... this was a note that I added that sometimes in order to um, get that utility switched back I have to go through an identity check. I add the Quicken reminder in my software to pay that bill the next month. If I don't add that I will forget to pay that bill and they'll pile up. <laughs> I've definitely learned that. I'm, I'm scatterbrained when it comes to that so I have to have a reminder for everything I do. I'm very compulsive with that uh, that's why I call this channel the compulsive investor. I'm very compulsive with these kind of things. Same thing with First Energy. I add the quick note to pay that bill. Now when a tenant moves in on the other SOP, if I do one of those in the future, I will do this in reverse. Make sure that the tenant has switched these um, utilities back into their name and then make sure that um, they get removed from my property or my um, Quicken software. I will meet the tenant or I'll make an arrangement to meet the tenant to turn over keys and when I go there I'm gonna bring uh, a kit that I have that the tools that I need for switching locks out and I just have happen to have one here. I'm gonna have um, links in my show notes but I use um, landlordlocks.com and what that is it's a system of, I have a master key that fits all of my properties and then I have a special key with this notch that I can use to pop in there like so rotate it and it actually pulls this cylinder completely out of the doorknob and it takes seconds to do that and I pop a new cylinder right back in so tenant moves out I take all their locks out and move those to another property in the future and I put a new one in there so that um, 
the, the next tenant doesn't have to worry about there being other keys out there uh, that somebody could sneak in. So that's a nice safety feature. Landlordlocks.com. I highly recommend them. So I, I switch those out and I, and I make sure I highlight these when that's done. I replace the locks. I have a, a sheet here that tells me how many keys I gave that tenant. It's usually just two. Uh, but sometimes I'll, they'll request another if, if they have teenagers in the house or what, for whatever reason. But I usually give two, but I make sure I get those two back or I charge them. I do an inspection with the tenant there. That way I can make a sheet and list any damages and take pictures of damages. And these are basically like, like maybe large holes in the walls or uh, damaged areas that, things that weren't caused by normal wear and tear. And those things that that uh, you can tell the tenant did something carelessly. Well, that those will be those things will be taken out of their security deposit. Before that tenant uh, leaves, I'm going to need a forwarding address from them, so I have a place to send the security deposit. I have 30 days to do that by Ohio law. I'm going to check the utility meters. I'm going to take a picture of them because I just kind of want to see. Yeah, well, if any uh, extra water has been used or whatever. I sometimes will install a lockbox with, with keys in it for contractors. If, they, if, they, if somebody has to come in and, and uh, clean or do a repair, because I, I do not do a lot of these repairs on my own anymore. I did for my first few properties. Uh, I saved money doing that. Now I would rather save time. So rather than trading my time for money, I like to trade my money for time at this point. So I might install a contractor lock. There's these cylinders here. There's a special one that I give a certain key to my contractor, uh, it's a couple different ones. And I just install this cylinder in there when they have uh, work to do. And they keep that key. Uh, again, I make arrangements for anything that needs to be done. And I'll, I'll even note that here on these sheets sometimes. Uh, for finalizing, I will send that security deposit out to that tenant after I've made sure that they have not ran up some humongous water bill for me to pay. Um, I itemize the deposit if there's any damages that they are responsible for. And then I return that deposit. Finally, I remove them from their, my contacts and get ready to put the next tenant in. Then what I'll do is I'll take this sheet after it's been completely highlighted. Sometimes I'll run a highlight across the top. I'll run this into my scanner and I will save it to my computer under that tenant. Oh, <laughs> in my next video, I decided that I wanted to do something fun. I'm going to answer the question, why is real estate investing so profitable? This is something that I, I knew it was profitable before I got into it, but it wasn't until a few years into it that I started to realize why it was so powerful and why you were able to make so much money with real estate. So I'm gonna use some, some props for this uh, next video. I've got uh, some playing cards. I've got some, some pennies. So I'm going to do a nice video on that. If you like this video, got anything from it, please like and subscribe down below. And that way you won't miss out on any of my future videos.